hyperpigmentation babies. This summers are scary. As someone with body acne, I literally get it. I vividly remember being in high school and sitting at like the football bleachers in a white t-shirt. And as I was walking off the field back towards the classrooms, everyone was like kind of whispering and pointing at me. And it wasn't until later I realized that my back pimples had popped and they were soaking through my shirt and I had like pus and blood on my shirt. And needless to say, not only was I so insecure about my body acne and my back acne, but I I sometimes get little spots of hyperpigmentation, the little red or purple marks. Usually mine are pink, but sometimes they turn brown and they stay behind even after the acne goes away. This is normally what's called PIH, post-inflammatory hyperpigmentation. And whether your hyperpigmentation is from acne or if you have something like a sunburn that peeled that's leaving behind pigmentation or even tinea versicolor, it can be so difficult to try to just feel good in a swimsuit or in a backless dress, something cute like this. And I've already shared my body acne routine, which I still use as well as a lot of tips for body acne and how to deal with that. But what about for those of us who are struggling with hyperpigmentation? Maybe the acne has calmed down thanks to those routines, but like these dark marks are left behind. And what sucks about hyperpigmentation is that, you know, acne sucks. It's painful. It's there, but it goes away, you know, within a couple of weeks as our bodies change and as our skin regrows and heals. But the dark spots can last for three to six months. A lot of people think that they're scars, but fun fact, if you got this, it's not actually a scar. It's hyperpigmentation. The good news is that it will probably go away eventually, but it might take a little bit more both time and effort to do that. And there are things like vitamin C or like strategic sunscreens and washes that can be used to help speed up that process. And for those of us who have hyperpigmentation on our shoulders, backs, or anywhere else, consider this your guidebook on what to look for. First, it starts with the shower. And I have to say that this is probably the one step that is the least necessary and the least important when it comes to hyperpigmentation. With hyperpigmentation, what matters are the products that really stay on the skin. So making sure that you have good body hygiene is important. You wanna get something that's not going to exacerbate hyperpigmentation or acne. But um, if you have a body wash that you like, use that. I love this one, but I also love the April Skin Body Wash. If you have body acne, I would highly, highly recommend the Face Reality uh, Benzoyl Peroxide Body Wash. Holica Holica has a really good aloe body wash. And this one right here is the Silk Shake from Zitsticka. I love this for people who have body acne and hyperpigmentation and just in general want to cleanse your skin well, remove any traces of sunscreen and you know have a fun time doing it. The bottle on this is fantastic. The ingredients are wonderful and the ingredients are acne skin friendly. This is a probiotic cleanser with tea tree. So it's acne skin safe. And as long as you have a good body cleanser, you're good to go. This is one I do recommend, but it's important to find the right one for you so that A, you enjoy using it and B, you actually will. If there are any ingredients that I could point out for specifically hyperpigmentation in a cleanser, I would say look for a vitamin C. And if there are any vitamin C face cleansers that like didn't work for you, you'd literally put those on your back and use those. Anything with antioxidants as a cleanser will be really helpful. It's expensive, but the uh, Biosance Jelly Squalene Elderberry Cleanser, no! This is expensive, but this jelly cleanser was amazing for my face. And I do take what's on my face and put it on my chest and my back. So this was awesome. There's a vitamin C from April Skin, the Calendula cleanser. Freaking fantastic. Holica Holica is great too. Use something you like, hunty bunties. The real stuff starts to happen when we get out of the shower and start leaving things on our skin. And I'm not gonna call it magic, I'm gonna call it science, because that's what it is. Vitamin C is an amazing antioxidant, and it actually helps to stop pigment from being created in our skin. Other ingredients that do this are things like licorice, like alpha arbutin, like kojic acid, and other alpha hydroxy acids, all fantastic. But vitamin C is really, really good for many, many reasons. And it's really hard to find a spray vitamin C. You know, I've been able to find some sprays for salicylic acid for body acne, specifically these. They make it really easy to spray stuff onto your back. And these have salicylic acid. Both of these are great. Same with the Sandra Lee MD one, fantastic. But when it comes to hyperpigmentation, I haven't been able to find like a vitamin C product that's in a spray form. The closest thing that I've found would have to be the bubble spray. And although I love that for the face, I don't necessarily recommend it for hyperpigmentation on the back. But what I did find is from Murad and this toner actually lends itself very well to actually screwing on your own little spray top and this is awesome. Now, this is made by Dr. Howard Murad. He is a dermatologist. He has a wonderful story and some of their products are hit and miss, but overall they're pretty good. This one smells divine, but that's because it does have a fragrance. So if you have super sensitive skin, look for a fragrance-free vitamin C that you can add a little spray or two. But if you like Murad, if you've already used products from the line, if you trust a dermatologist back to skincare line and like the ingredients and you're not sensitive to fragrance, this is fantastic if you have hyperpigmentation either on your face or on your body. Ooh, 
Henriksen also has a dark spot toner, the blue one. That is excellent too, but I found that it's harder to get like a spray top into it. But this one actually lends itself because it has this um, kind of threaded opening. So you can actually take a spray nozzle and just poop, poop, and just spin, spin, put it on and spray, spray that onto the back. This specifically has vitamin C. This has yeast and a ton of amino acids. So it's very supportive to the skin. And this vitamin C is really what's staying on the skin and soaking into the skin to help prevent the hyperpigmentation. I would recommend using this literally every single morning, even if you're wearing clothing, which we're gonna talk about UPF protective clothing in a second. Spray this on your body, like as you get out of the shower, underneath your clothing. And especially if you're going into the sun or something like that, spray this on underneath your sunscreen because vitamin C can boost up your sunscreen, which yes, you do need to spray and apply. Now, there are a couple of sunscreens that I recommended in other videos. Use a sunscreen that works well for you. I love aerosol sunscreens for the body. You do need to make sure that you're applying enough. And in general, you should try to do a first application like with your hands, like a cream. But if you need to spray to reapply, or if you do need to spray something like this because you can't reach, this makes it much easier. This is from Elta MD. This is the UV Aero Broad Spectrum SPF 45. It's a transparent zinc oxide. And I would say it's like a six or seven out of 10 on the transparency scale. You do kind of have to rub it in. But for those who have a hard time reaching, this is amazing. And remember, if you're not using SPF in your routine, you're losing 90% of the benefit of skincare. Like this should be the number one thing that you focus on. So again, if you're on a budget, the cleanser, get a sunscreen that works. And a lot of people don't realize how involved sunscreen is with hyperpigmentation. Hyperpigmentation does not set in as much when you are wearing sunscreen. Sunscreen literally prevents hyperpigmentation from happening. It is absolutely essential. And this is a great one. I'll show you kind of how it works. You just shaky, shaky, spray it on. And can you see how it kind of comes out thick there, but then it also, you know, really blends in nicely up here. If it comes out thick like this, I just go like this. I try to blend it in. I've even used my shirt and my towel to just kind of blot it in a little bit after letting it sit on my skin for a hot moment. But that makes it really, really easy to apply. And you can get this on the back area where it's hard to reach. Now, if you're super flexible, Cirque du Soleil contortionist, good for you. You could also use something like even a sunscreen oil, especially if you want to look a little glowy in the summer sun. This is the Resetting Refreshing Mist from Super Goop. This is something that I believe is brand new. This is phenomenal. Highly recommend. Shaky, shaky. This one has a spray. So spray, spray, and that actually makes it very, very, very easy to apply. Another one that's a little bit more pasty, but still really good is from Pacifica. It's also in an aerosol type thing so that you can actually get it where it needs to go. When it comes to a white cast and when it comes to blending things in, I get it. I would say spray something on, literally leave it there for 10 minutes and you can use a towel to kind of just rub it in. And a lot of people are like, but if you're using a towel, aren't you rubbing it off? No, if you've let it sit there and kind of have a chance to soak in, it's actually soaked into the skin and you're just kind of helping to push that in a little bit more. The best thing to do is use a buddy, especially because, you know, the towel could rub off a little bit of zinc if it's a mineral-based formula. But overall, you don't want to forget shade, UPF clothing, and just trying your best. I would recommend sunscreen if there is any area of your skin, your shoulders, or anything that's hyperpigmented that's in the sun. But I don't apply sunscreen to, like, my body if it's not directly exposed. So if, I, if I'm wearing a jacket or, like, a shawl or something, then I don't. However, I do look for things such as UPF protective clothing. There are UPF protective swimsuits, there are pants, there are are jackets, there are shirts, etc. And these are basically pieces of clothing that has like an SPF rating of 50 or 70, etc. And it's basically sunscreen clothing. A lot of these are usually nice because they're very lightweight. So they're really good for exercise. That's usually who they're kind of made for. But I've actually been able to find quite a few things that work well for even everyday wear and that look kind of cute that aren't like, you know, overly athletic, put it that way. Uh, Cover Swim has some of the best swimsuits in the world. I've gotten some really good high quality ones that aren't overly expensive on Amazon. There's that brand, it's called Kulia or Kukulaba. The ones that I use for my um, my gloves, they are fantastic. Sunday afternoon makes great hats. All of those are fantastic. And again, don't forget that those, including staying in the shade, are a form of sun protection that you should definitely use in addition to sunscreen. And those should be the first thing, like, you know, the cleanser, get yourself a sunscreen shirt. That is going to take you farther and help you more with hyperpigmentation, right? Making sure that you have those priorities straight is essential. Now, what happens when you get out of the sun? A lot of people people like to apply aloe vera because, you know, they got a sunburn or something. Our sunscreen game is on point, so we just prevented that sunburn. So we don't have to worry about the burning, the blistering, the peeling, and the hyperpigmentation that the burning and blistering and peeling leaves behind. That being said, if you want to soothe your skin after the sun, I would recommend a sheet mask. This is one of the best that I have currently been using. This is from Papa Recipe. This was basically made by a father who had eczema and he saw that his daughter was struggling too. So he started making products for her based on different foods and specifically different vegetables. This is the carrot pack. They also have a eggplant one, which I love. Usually every sunny
Sunday morning on Patreon and Discord where we drink coffee together and we face mask or we talk about things or we go for a walk together. It's great. But I have been using some of these uh, for my face masking. And this one specifically is the Carrot Solution Mask Pack. And this has vitamin C and turmeric. Again, amazing antioxidants that can help with hyperpigmentation. This also has hyaluronic acid and allantoin. So they're both moisturizing to the skin and helpful in kind of the healing process. And the whole reason that this is the one that I love is because this is one of the juiciest masks I have ever used. You literally pull the mask out and it leaves you with half a package of just serum. And that's really what a sheet mask is, right? It's a cotton, you know, sheet mask thing and then a whole bunch of serum. This is the juiciest face mask that you can possibly get. So you take the face mask out, you put the face mask on your face, but you take the serum and you put it all over your chest and your shoulders and your back and your arms. And then you still have some left over. Like this is so juicy. <laughs> now, once you've had that on your face, once you've used it on your face, I like to flip my mask down and put it on my neck or my chest. But instead of flipping it down, flip it over to the back and you can literally put this on your back or on your shoulder and it's a really great way to just kind of calm this area down and again get some of those beneficial ingredients onto there you could just use this directly on your back but i use it first on my face and then on my back because my back acne and hyperpigmentation kind of takes the back burner as compared to this front door, right? But this is a phenomenal mask. It is great if you have hyperpigmentation or you want something brightening. It's inexpensive as well. They give you like a pack of 10. The eggplant ones are also fantastic, but especially for the hyperpigmentation, I would say the vitamin C. And again, if you're just starting or if you're struggling to know what to do or kind of how to build a routine for your body hyperpigmentation that's right for you, make sure you know those triggers, right? So is your hyperpigmentation caused by tinea versicolor, which is like a fungal infection? Get that taken care of by a derm. Is your hyperpigmentation because of sunburns and and sun exposure and your back is peeling and starting to get irritated and leave inflammation based pigmentation behind or is it from acne is it from those little bumps or marks or picking hi yeah me too <laughs> if that's the case then helping to get the acne under control can help prevent that hyperpigmentation and again we have videos on that but then using products just like these and making sure that you're staying with that spf are going to be the best things you can look for as someone who was literally bullied for my acne on my body etc like i would change in in pe and in class because i was so afraid of other people looking at me and seeing my body acne. It was horrible. And I don't like to think about those days. And yet as someone who went through it and didn't have anyone who could guide me or help me just understand how to deal with my skincare, how to deal with my body. I, as your acne big sister, I want to be that for you. And if I can help share with you what actually matters as based by science and the biology of our skin versus what doesn't and help you not only do the things that work for your body and your skincare routine, but feel better about your skin. These are normal skin conditions. Like, Acne literally happens to everyone, yet because of media or society, we are so conditioned to judge ourselves for it. F this idea that we have to have clear skin and like, you know, a tight waist, but big hips to go to the beach. You wanna know how to get ready for a bikini body in literally no time? You put on a swimsuit and you walk your ass out the door to the pool or the beach or wherever the f you wanna go because your body is a bikini body and it is beautiful. And your scars are badges of strength and your stretch marks are tiger stripes. And you, my baby, are beautiful. Beautiful. And you deserve to have a fucking amazing time. Like think about how amazing your body is, carries us throughout every single day, how strong our legs are, how our stomach digests food, how our arms allow us to hug and embrace other people and explore the world around us. Hating on our bodies. I'm so sick of it. I'm so done with it. And whether it's our body shape and size or the texture and conditions of our skin, it is time to leave that bullshit in the past, use things that make us look and feel our best. And if that means a UPF protective swimsuit, then fuck yes, you will see me in it. And if you see me at the beach, wave at me and say, beach, please come over here and give me a hug. I'll probably pick you up off the ground the way I did Dr. Pimple Popper because you know, I lift other people up both metaphorically and physically. It's kind of my thing, but um, yeah, say hi. Hi, it'll be great. It'll be fun. <laughs> Always remember to reapply your SPF and be beautiful both inside and out. I love you and I cannot wait to see you in this next video. <sighs> love you guys. Bye.